Hey, good morning, everybody. It's a little bit before 7, so I figured I'd get on just a, a smidgen early. It is Thursday, January the 14th, 2021. Welcome to the Morning Watch. Hope you're well. Hope you slept well. It's Thursday, which is Friday Eve, right? That's always a good thing. Give a second for some folks to get in here before we start. Good morning. Two of my favorite Kims, Kim Yance and Kim Crowley. Good morning. There's my sister. The Today Show's coming on. You probably you guys can hear that from time to time. That's how I know it's seven. Good morning, Zach. <clears throat> so today we're opening up another book, um, Second Peter. A very short book, only three chapters. Um, but Peter, this Peter wrote two books of the New Testament, First Peter and Second Peter. And this one is unique in that it, before we pray, in that it is it is Peter's last words that we that we have record of. And you hear that coming through his his writings. So before we pray, think about you know um, think about maybe a last conversation that you had with someone that you loved. Think about you if you knew that you were going to have the last conversation with someone. What would you tell them? You'd want to make the most of it, right? You'd want to really pour your heart into that conversation. That's what we have here. Second Peter. Is Peter's last words to us and so he makes the most of the space that he has I can assure you there's my mom Carrie's here Brian Berta Kim Smith Glenn good, Wilma good morning so let's pray and then we'll jump in Lord thank you for this day thank you for life and strength and energy to get up and get moving this morning Lord we pray that as we study your word this morning that you would Make it come alive to our minds, to our souls, um, that you would encourage us with it, challenge us with it, teach us with it, correct some things, Lord, if it's necessary. Lord, I pray that, um, that we would do, that everything that we would do and say would be to honor and glorify you, because you are worthy of that. Lord, we want to lift up the sick to you this morning. There's so many that are struggling with the virus and other things, Lord, we want to lift them up specifically to you this morning. Pray, Lord, that you would give them strength and healing and comfort during this time. Lord, we love you so much. Thank you for all your blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so let's read. Let's read for a second Peter here and see what, see what Peter has to say. He starts out, he says, This letter is from Simon Peter, a slave and apostle. Of Jesus Christ I'm writing to you to who share the same precious faith that we have this faith was given to you because of the justice and fairness of Jesus Christ our God and Savior may God give you more and more grace and peace as you grow in your knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord by his divine power God has given us everything that we need for living a godly life we have received all of this by coming to know him, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. And because of his glory and excellence, he's given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. In view of all of this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence and moral excellence with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control with patient endurance and patient endurance with godliness and godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love for everyone. The more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But those who fail to develop in this way are short-sighted or blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their old sins. So, dear brothers and sisters, 
Work hard to prove that you really are among those God has called and chosen. Do these things, and you will never fall away. Then God will give you a grand entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Therefore, I will always remind you about these things, even though you already know them, and are standing firm in the truth you have been taught. And it is only right that I should keep on reminding you as long as I live. For our Lord Jesus Christ has shown me that I must soon leave this earthly life. So I will work hard to make sure you always remember these things after I am gone. For we were not making up clever stories when we told you about the powerful coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We saw his majestic splendor with our own eyes when he received honor and glory from God the Father. The voice from the majestic glory of God said to him, This is my dearly loved Son, who brings me great joy. We ourselves heard that voice from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain. Because of that experience, we have even greater confidence in the message proclaimed by the prophets. You must pay close attention to what they wrote. For their words are like the lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns. And Christ, the morning star, shines in your hearts. Above all, you must realize that no prophecy is came from the prophet's own understanding or from human initiative. No, those prophets were moved by the Holy Spirit and they spoke from God. May God bless the reading of his word. So, what do we see here in Second Peter chapter 1? There's a lot, okay, a lot of really good things. But he... He, who's his audience here? He's still talking, just like he was in First Peter. In Second Peter, Peter is still talking about, it's talking to this network of churches in Asia Minor. Um, uh, it's not one specific church. It is a network of churches. And so the first big idea that I think Peter is trying to get us to understand here, number one, is don't feel as if you are lacking in what you need to live a godly life. Peter writes in verse 3, By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. How do we know this? He goes into detail. He says, We've received all this by coming to know him, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. If you are a believer... You have been called into a close and personal relationship with the Lord. The Holy Spirit resides in you. you got everything you need. Are you perfect? No. Am I perfect? No. But we have the Holy Spirit living within us who will empower us to live the life that God has called us to live. So, I know if you're like me, sometimes I feel like I'm not worthy to do this. I'm not a preacher. I'm not a singer. I'm not a. I'm not any of those things. I don't stand in a pulpit on Sunday mornings. How, I'm not a great evangelist. No, that's not what it means. We were all called to go and make disciples. We were all called to live a life that is different. Marked difference. So it should encourage you this morning that you've been given, Peter tells us, you've been given everything that you need. Now, verse 5 and 6 and 7 is something that it, it's very it, it's, it's very interesting. Um, uh, a lot of theologians and things will call these verses the ladder, the ladder of righteousness, because you can see that one builds on each other. So let's look at it. He says, in view of all this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Now, when you see that, make every effort. Do not think that Peter is saying that, that our works contribute to our salvation. Salvation is, is, is brought about by grace through faith. Works, things that we do in response to and in a reflection of our faith, don't save us. They're just an outward representation of what has occurred internally. The day you got saved, if you are a believer and you've repented and turned your life to Jesus, 
you'll never be any more saved than you were that day. But what did James say? Without work, without without uh, without works, our faith is dead. So works show the fruit that is manifesting itself. Very starts out very small, little seed, right? As we learn and grow and do and serve and love, it begins to show itself. But it says supplement your faith with a general knowledge of a general provision of moral excellence. Now, in the ESV and other books, other translations, it will say faith. So I prefer that because that is a better representation. So he says start with faith and then add on knowledge and then self-control and then patient endurance and then godliness and godliness with brotherly affection and then brotherly affection with love. Starts with faith, ends in love. No better truth that you can wrap your head around this morning than that. So make every effort. There is a part of this that we play. Um, for example, there's no greater way to get to know God than through the reading of his word, right? I think we can all agree to that. But not one time in my 51 years of life has my Bible ever jumped off the shelf and hit me in the head and screamed, read me. We have to take the time because, you know, really we do in life we do the things that we feel like are important for us to do. Okay? We all have priorities. We all have things that mean more to us than others. Living a godly life and growing in the spiritual disciplines that come with being a believer should be a priority for us as followers of Jesus. Okay? So let's move on. <clears throat> so... He says in verse 10, So dear brothers, work hard to prove that you really are among those that God has called and chosen. Do these things and you will never fall away. Then God will give you a grand entrance in the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Heaven. How often do you think of heaven? The more people that I have that, have, that I love who have gone on to be with the Lord, I find myself thinking more and more and more about heaven. Heaven is the reward that is coming for those who love Jesus and who serve him. And so, don't ever forget that. All right. So, then verses 12 through 15, Peter talks about the fact that he is leaving soon. He says, Therefore, I will always remind you about these things, even though you already know them and are standing firm in the truth that you've been taught. And it is only right that I should keep on reminding you as long as I live. For Lord Jesus has shown me that I must soon leave this earthly life. I'll work hard to make sure you always remember these things after I'm gone. One of the things that my mom, my mom was uh, really, really good at writing things down and recording little things. Um, we found, we were watching home movies this weekend and we unco I uncovered a little jewel that I didn't even know existed. We were hosting Christmas here and we were videotaping and my mom evidently got her hands on a video camera. You can't see her face. It's just her talking into the camera. And she's talking to her family. And she's given, th she's given such incredible wisdom and just love. And she said, well, she said, this is to my children. She said, I want you to love each other, take care of each other. And uh, it, it honestly was pretty emotional for, for me and us listening to because uh, she's been gone now for, for uh, seven years, going on seven years. So the question is, this is what that is for for Peter. Peter is telling them, I'm, this is it. I want you to live and hold in there. Persevere. He says, and then verses, as we, as we move to close, he says in verses 16, 17, and 18, Peter writes, he says, we're not making this stuff up. He says, we were there. When he's referring to this story, there's really, there's two times that I remember that God spoke from heaven to Jesus publicly uh, and said, you know, behold my son in whom I'm well pleased. Uh, when John the Baptist baptized him, remember that? It, said, it was like, a, it was like a, a, a dove descended on Jesus. Here, Peter's talking about, because that was before Peter was called. Uh, this was talking about the Mount of Transfiguration when Jesus' glory was shown to the disciples and he says we ourselves heard that voice so he says i was an eyewitness to who jesus was 
and what he did, which is powerful. Then verses 19 through the end of the chapter, Peter talks about the value of God's word. He says, because of that experience, we have even greater confidence in the message proclaimed by the prophets. You must pay close attention to what they wrote, for their words are like a lamp shining in a dark place. As you and I, we, we, can, we can be this too. The Bible, God's word, is a light in the midst of great darkness. The world needs light right now more than it's ever needed light before. Let's be people of the light. The Bible wants us. He actually, actually tells us to be salt and light. And you know what? It doesn't take a lot of light to dispel darkness. The gospel is light. Hope you're encouraged by this this morning. I have been. Tomorrow we're going to be, tomorrow's Friday, we'll be in First, uh, Second Peter chapter 2. And then Monday we will wrap up, uh, Monday we will wrap up um, Second Peter <clears throat> and move on. Um, so I love you all. Have a wonderful, wonderful Thursday. Let's pray together. See who else joined since I was talking. Lorene and Robin and Stephanie and Veronica. Good morning. Love you all. Let's pray together and then we'll go. Lord, thank you for this Thursday. Lord, thank you for the truth that you've given us. It starts with faith, Lord, and we know it ends with love. Lord, thank you for the enduring, the enduring wonder of your word. Lord, thank you for all your blessings. Be with us today. Give us peace. Give us strength. Give us wisdom. We ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. All right. I love you all. Have a great day. Be blessed, as uh, Brian always says. And we'll see you tomorrow. God bless you.